helpful for others. So let's talk about this progression. So it started out quantitative heavy research, looking at impairments, mm. looking mm. at motor control, mm. looking at posture, and then mm. somewhere around 2010, 2012, from the outside, yeah. something happened. Now, what happened? So, there? yeah. So, <laughs> so if you kind of frame my um, my journey as a young, you know, as, as a training physiotherapist, I had this enormous sense of frustration that what I was being taught had no evidence base. Mm. Um, you know, we had a, I, I trained in Dunedin in New Zealand um, and we had this little library. It was a little room with, you know, publications of the spine and the Australian Journal of Physiotherapy. That was it. Like that was it for research and <laughs> nothing else. And then we were trotting out all this stuff which had zero evidence behind it. And that deeply concerned me. But in, in that sense that my entire mindset around managing pain or understanding pain was purely structural and biomechanical. That was it. Um, and, uh, and that really took me into my PhD journey or post-grad and then into the PhD, PhD journey looking at, you know, a specific group of people with spondylolisthesis. Um, and the whole idea, it was right, right around that, that time with the emergence of, you know, stability and mm. local muscles, global muscles. So I just got sucked into that void, I think. Um, but also around that time was this emergence of, you know, pain science. So Max Usman, who you may or may not know of, was a really pioneer in that space who was at Curtin. And we had some extraordinary conversations about, you know, like these worlds, it, his, his world was neuroscience and my world was people with back pain who had these impairments and structural biomechanical impairments and I was addressing them and these people were getting better because that was my lens um, and then you know post PhD it all just kind of started to unravel so I can remember um, Wim Dankitz oh, he was my P first PhD um, experiment really um, and he, we were started looking at you know what these people of pain were doing and it wasn't do it we weren't seeing what we thought we would see and mm -hmm. i think that's been a lot of my journey is um you ask a question of data and you look at the data and it tells you something different and you have to stop reflect reframe and go what is this telling me and i think that's been my clinical journey as well of like we come at it with these beliefs we are so belief orientated as human beings i, I reckon um and that ability to sit back and self-reflect. Um, and probably the other thing that was pivotal was around the mid nineties, I made a decision to completely change how I practiced. So get out of this short treatment session and spend an hour with a new patient, half an hour with a follow-up. And that was pivotal for me to have time to listen, to reflect, to question, to explore, um, to, uh, play to be creative that was a critical moment in my career where i'm going I, don't, I can't work in this paradigm of treating symptoms it deeply unsettled me i felt like i was treating symptoms and not getting to the underlying basis of what was going on i didn't have time i was working on autopilot it was horrible that deeply unsettled me as a thinking person mm. and as a reflective person and i think those parallel journeys uh, and, and then the evolving understanding of pain. I think pain research was it really at its infancy when I graduated. It's exploded um, of then updating my understanding of reflecting that in clinical practice and going back and asking these hard questions and looking at the data and going, what does it tell us? So that whole process really um, upended my entire belief system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, essentially yeah. to go actually the things that I was believing that I believed just weren't evidence-based and I had to then I had to either go well what I'm doing I can't do anymore so either I walk away from it or I do something different and I'm so grateful I didn't walk away that I actually had the you know presence of mind to go these people desperately need help so walking away from a difficult problem doesn't solve a problem actually going deeper into reflecting on my own practice, my own belief, my own behaviors, how I interact or how I support these people is the key. And, you know, understanding that I trained in manual therapy, spent hours 
learning to really um, uh, to manipulate any you know parts of the body, and I, I can do that. But I, I just saw I see that as such a um, small part of the whole picture now. Like I spent mm. hours learning those skills, mm. and the skills that are fundamental I see in clinical practice are not those skills. Mm. Um, patient handling is really important, I, but that's part of communication, I think. Mm. Um, so did so, you have? So that's, was, a, that's kind of it's an iterative journey that yeah, just yeah. has so many layers, and it's been influenced by lots of people as well. Yeah. Um, you know, people who have really questioned me hard, who have like attacked my beliefs. Yeah. Um, that's been a painful process, but but I've I've gone. I suppose I've been fortunate to go back and really question myself, um, and then allow myself to go i need to leave that behind and so the t the 2012 paper was kind of like my coming out paper really i'd <laughs> mold i'd mold on that paper for quite some time and um contacted karen khan and said i, I feel like i need to publish this <laughs> i need to kind of set my record straight because i uh, you hadn't mentioned other papers like uh, clinical instability you know that was my belief system that these behaviors that we were seeing in patients were a, a fundamental um, deficit in the stability of the spine and it was all just about that and mm. I, I like I just had to kind of throw that cloak away and go you know what that's how I saw the world but this is now how I see the world and this is how I think we have to move forward um, and of course that didn't sit well <laughs> with quite a few of my colleagues yeah but, but to me it was kind of like a re reset I think in terms of where I was heading um, both clinically and 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 from a research perspective. Yeah, that's well, that's that, so. So around about that 2012 paper, so you were sitting on that for a few years, I imagine intellectually. Yeah, you were definitely. About yeah. What was How going would on. I write this? How would I frame it? Yeah. And, and I I kind of felt like I've been tagged with this, yeah. but you were into you know stability. You published on this stuff, and I'm like, I had to come out and go look. I get it. That's where yeah. it was at. But yeah. that is not what I'm thinking. And the reasons people got better were probably completely different reasons to what I thought. You know, you know, why a human being changes is probably got a lot more to do with fundamental beliefs and their perception of threat. And probably what we were doing is reframing in a way that de-threatened them. Um, and look, you could argue you could take lots of different ways of doing that. I don't think it was the best way or evidence-based way. And so I had to reset that for myself. Mm.